One of the weaknesses of LLMs out of the box is that they don't know anything about recent events. So I was excited to come across this blog post by Perplexity AI about online LLMs. And so they say they've introduced two new models, um, 7B Online and 70B Online, that aim to give us helpful, up-to-date, factual responses. And if we go down a little bit, we can see they, they point out the problems uh, with LLMs in general, uh, with freshness and hallucinations. And if we go down a little bit more, they then explain how they do it. So they're using open source models, so Mistral and Llama. They've then built some search technology uh, to, to kind of feed information into the models. And then they've done some fine tuning so that the models can make use of that data. Let's come over to the terminal and give it a try. So we're gonna have a look at my poetry configuration file. And so in here, in particular, notice the light LLM dependency. So this is a library that lets us have the OpenAI API, but for any LLM. We're also going to set up an environment variable, perplexity AI API key. Uh, don't worry, I'll revoke this before you see it. Uh, then we'll call source, so we'll get that into the environment variable, and then we're going to run the IPython REPL. We're then going to import the from the rich, the, uh, the print statement, which I find is better than the normal print, and we're going to import the completion module from light LLM. Now I'm just going to create a function called ask, which is going to take in a model and a question. We'll set a system prompt. I'm not going to make it too complicated, but just tell it to try not to make up the answer. And then we're going to call the completion function. We'll pass in the model, some messages. So we're going to have that system message. And then the user message will be the question that comes in. We'll tell it to stream the results. And then we're going to iterate through the response and print out the chunks to the screen. So now we need to have a look at the models. So Perplexity AI have a lot of different models. The ones in particular that we're going to be using are the Mistral 7B Instruct. So that's the Mistral uh, AI, but without online. So it, does, it's just, it doesn't have any uh, access to the internet. And then we've got PPLX 7B Online uh, down a, a little bit. Uh, and that one does have access uh, to the internet. So let's start with the calling the ask function. We'll pass in the Mistral 7B instruct model and we're going to ask it, tell me recent news about Rafael Nadal. Uh, and it comes up with this. It says Nadal recently won the French Open men's singles title for a 13th time. So that bit uh, was correct at some point. Uh, it says it, he beat Djokovic in the final. I guess that, that is quite plausible, but this, this is completely, uh, completely made up. Let's now update it to use the PPLX 7B online model. Uh, so this is much better. So this is actually correct. So Nadal has recently announced just a couple of days ago that he's going to be coming back uh, to play tennis in, in January 2024 in Brisbane. Let's see if it can tell us what's the actual name of the tournament. So we'll just update that there. And it says uh, it's the Brisbane International 2024. And it also identifies he's been a sideline for most of the year. It's a 250 event. So that's correct as well. So this is really good. This is a good start. Let's try something else. So uh, an upcoming uh, tennis star is, is Yannick Sinner. So let's see what happens if we ask it to tell us about his recent matches. So this is what it comes up with. Pretty much all of this is made up. Uh, it doesn't even make sense in some places. So it says he played in the seventh round of one tournament and the sixth round of another. Uh, it's kind of plausible, but again, it's the, the, none of these results actually happen. Let's scroll up a little bit. And so we get to the top, the ATP finals in Turin, but that's correct. It's pulled out, it's pulled out some correct stuff there. Although even there, the score for the last match is, is incorrect. So let's try another question. So let's ask it about his current ATP ranking. Uh, and so it actually comes up with the correct. So he's correctly pointed out that he is ranked number four. Um, so it worked this time, but I find that sometimes it just gives me a completely wrong answer. So let's just try it again. Um, and see what happens this time. And so it looks like it's actually got the, the, the same the same answer this time. So we got we got lucky twice. Uh, and it did also add a correct fact about Adriano Panata. So that's quite cool. Let's go do one more question. So what are the latest scores in the ATP Next Gen Finals? Uh, so it comes up with these scores. So these scores are correct. Uh, they aren't part of the round of 16. There were only eight players that can't be part of the round of 16. Uh, and finally, Let's see if it can figure out who's in the final of the ATP Next Gen Finals. And it points out that it's Arthur Fies against uh, Hamad Medjedovic. And so that's correct. So, so it's, done, it's done a good job with that one. Um, so the next thing I, you might be curious about is how, well, how much does this cost? So we're going to come over to the pricing page. And so they've got different pricing models depending whether you're using the online or the offline model. So the offline one is kind of similar uh, to what you see with OpenAI. So they charge you for the input tokens and they charge you for the output tokens. And then for the online models, a, they don't charge you for the input tokens, but they charge you kind of a flat. Uh, it works out at 0.5 cents per request, and then the output tokens are the same. If we have a look at my account, this is how much money I've spent to, to sort of playing around trying to, trying to build this demo. It's cost me about 13 cents. 
Uh, we can then sort of drill into it and it'll show you how much did you spend on input tokens, output tokens and on the requests. And in particular, you can see that I spent 12 cents uh, on the requests. Uh, and so in general, th this is quite a neat, uh, a neat thing they've done here, but as we can see from the different example, it's, it hasn't completely removed hallucinations. It would also be cool if you could see the sources that it used to, to give you the answers, but as far as I can tell, uh, you can't do that when you're using the API. But their, their playground does tell you the sources when you use it through there, so maybe at some point that it will be possible to, to get those back as well. Uh, and even with online LLMs like this, I don't think it takes away the need for retrieval augmented generation or RAG, where we give the LLM the specific data that we know is going to get to answer or get very close to answering our questions. Uh, and if you want to learn more about RAG, check out this video up here and I'll see you in the next one.